have the stream up. I'll email you and uh, just text me when you're ready. And uh, I'm going to test the points. Okay, here to begin the mic check. This is mic number one. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. Microphone number two. Check one, two, three. One, two, three. Super mic number three. Super mic number three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Check, check, one, two. President mic number four, mic number four. One, two, three, mic, one, two, three, sound check. Again, mic number four. Five, one, two, three, one, two, three, check, check, check. And lastly, mic number six, one, two, three, one, two, three, check, check, check. I will test the podium mic after I go, uh, actually I can test the podium mic, hold on. Podium mic, podium mic, one, two, three, check, one, two, three. Podium mic, one, two, one, two, three. Okay, if you could hear me, uh, I'm going to mute the sound now. We'll keep the shot up. Everything looks good. Thank you.
Stand for the pledge, please. Jay Grover, trustee, Nicole Novak, trustee, Jude Kuhn, our district clerk, Dr. Brian Graham, superintendent, Ashley Dreyer, president, Sue Marston, vice president, uh, Joy LaMarca, trustee, Danielle Bruno, trustee, uh, Michael Loria, assistant superintendent of curriculum, staff development, and human resources, Cheryl Cardone, assistant superintendent of pupil personnel services, and excuse this evening is Dr. Ruby Harris and uh, Glenn Bobeck. A trustee. So a couple of announcements. If you could silence your cell phones, please, um, that would be appreciated. And the emergency exits are directly behind me and directly in front of me. And with that, if I can have a motion to approve the agenda for June 6, 2022, please. All motion. And a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And if I could have a motion to approve the minutes from May 9, 2022, please. I'll motion. 
in a second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carries 6-0. Uh, we with us this evening we have student ambassadors. Um, we do not have any from the middle school, and we have from Grand Island um, Leah Dylight from the high school. Right? Do you have Leah with us? Do you come to the podium, please? Great. So I'm just going to be going over um, some of the highlights from this past month in the high school. Um, the girls varsity lacrosse team won their first sectional championship on June, 27, or on June 2nd sorry, with a 21-10 win over Williamsville East, and that is the first time in Grand Island history that we've done that, so congratulations. They had a 13 uh, win and 4 loss record this year and a 6-0 record in the championships. Um, the Grand Island rugby team was invited to Siena College on June 4th and 5th to compete in a Division II state playoffs for the second time in history. In history. And um, a big congratulations to our concert choir for receiving gold with distinction at Miss Mamindra's Festival at Lockport High School <coughs> on May 19th. And lastly for our clubs, um, we are very proud of our Grand Island Chess Club. Um, this weekend our chess team took first place at the final Western New York Scholastic Chess Tournament of the school year. Hayden Gary took second place individually in the underrated section, and John Paul Sebleski was selected as the Western New York Scholastic Chess Player of the Year, and he has increased more than 300 points in his USCF rating this school year. And for our Students of the Month this year, Anna Sibaletti was selected by the World Language Department, Sky Dreyer was selected by the Business Department, Jenna Hecht was selected by the English Department, Kito Magi was selected by the Science Department, Natalie Malish was selected by the Art Department, Jacob Mazza was selected by the Music Department, Nock Baum was selected by the Social Studies Department, Evan Pickering was selected by the Technology Department, and Alexander Smith was selected by the Math Department. Um, the Grand Island High School community came together this month to honor the Jefferson Avenue victims. On May 24th, we held an assembly of remembrance to honor the victims of the May 24th shootings in Buffalo and to hold place of space for our students to learn um, more about the action against racism and violence. And Sophia Turlecki, Marissa Minstreiner, and Taya Wilkes um, spoke during this assembly to share powerful messages with our students. And we acknowledge the 10 victims and the help among those students. In the wake of the Buffalo tragedy, Student Council has made ribbons for both students and staff to wear to help show support for the community and the victims who have lost their lives and all donations will go to the Feed More Western New York to support those families in need. Um, our class of 2022 seniors celebrated our annual class day last Friday, June 3rd. Um, a big thank you to the Grand Island community for supporting our students and contributing to our senior class day and our scholarship funds. Thank you to the senior class advisors, Mrs. Becker and Mrs. Marcus, teachers and staff for helping to organize this event for our seniors. And a big thank you to Mr. Gordon for preparing our senior class day video. It was amazing. And another thank you to Transportation for um, providing rides for, to our elementary school so we could um, see their schools one last time and do our little parade. Um, and Senior Prom is this Saturday. It will be located in Double Tree in Niagara Falls on June 11th. We are excited to announce that we're bringing back our post-prom this year. Um, it will be located in the Grand Island High School Viking Mall. <coughs> the after prom party is sure to become one of the biggest events of this senior year experience and it will take place on Saturday, June 11th at Grand Island High School from 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. And thank you to the local businesses and families of Grand Island for making generous donations to support this event. And post-prom committee will place an insert in the 2022 graduation pamphlet and it will be used to display names of the businesses that have been Thank you. Okay, that uh, brings us to correspondence recognition good news. We have an Eagle Scout with us this evening. Um, I would like to um, have Rasslin Huff come up to the podium. I don't want to say a few words about your project and what you are working on. I know usually Eagle Scouts complete a final uh, project that you work on for a while. Yeah, um, I made a large chess board for the middle school chess club, and it. I wanted to do something for the school for my project. I knew that when I 
for whatever I knew. I knew that I was going to do something for the school, and that's what I landed on. I recently heard that it's been getting a lot of use and actually ended up being very popular with the special needs class, which I was very happy to hear. Um, and I'm just happy that I was able to help do something good for my community and for my school. Thank you very much. Grace Hunter, uh, you're being very modest. <laughs> I, would you would you be so kind? It's just you know, uh, how many hours did you work? Did, did any teachers here help you? Did, I, some, did you do anything really unique with this project? I designed and 3D printed the models myself. It was a total of a month's worth of printing almost, split between a printer that I bought myself and one at the school. Grayson, could you, that's excellent, you're doing a great job. Could you just say it one more time, you 3D printed yes. chess pieces in white and black that are weather resistant and outdoors in our courtyard for kids to play chess out in the courtyard. And how tall are they? About a foot to a foot and a half, depending wow. on the piece. The Springs are foot, the Queens and Kings are a foot and a half. Awesome. Go ahead, I didn't mean to interrupt. Did I, any teachers help you? Yeah, Mr. I'd like to thank Mr. Smith for putting in a bulk of that, a ton of help. He, uh, he probably put in half as much work with the 3D printing as I did, because we split it amongst him. Good. And how about fellow uh, Boy Scouts? Do you want to recognize anybody that was on your team? I'd like, I mean, all of the Scouts who helped out during the build were great, we all. Yeah, absolutely. You had a wonderful team. I remember you, a few years ago when your team came in, uh, you had wheelbarrows, you had all sorts of work that you had to do in that courtyard. Uh, was that, that was just before COVID or during COVID? It was actually, it was last summer. It was basically during COVID, because yeah. I know that everything got postponed because of COVID. <laughs> Wonderful. So, so during COVID, you were able to successfully complete all of the responsibilities, duties, uh, everything associated with the Eagle Scout. That is tremendous. Congratulations. 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 Thank you. 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 Thank you with the scout and the parents back as far as first grade. I mean, if this isn't just a year, this is a culmination of, you know, 16, 17 years. I mean, and really, um, as Mother mentioned, only 4% of all scouts will receive um, this recognition. So as amazing as your project is, and <coughs> awesome that you shared it with the school, I think we need to recognize both the commitment on his part and his parents to um, get them to the Eagle Scout. And I will also say that on college applications and also on job applications, Eagle Scout is really a standout for anybody that can put that on um, their resume, as is the gold um, distinction for Eagle Scout. So congratulations to both you and your family. That is truly an amazing accomplishment. Yes. Thank
Okay, we did not have anyone sign up for the public comment session on agenda items, so we have moved us to curriculum and instruction. I know there's a report attached from me for everyone to read, and Mike, I don't know if you want to say a few words. Yeah, no, I just, I, the report's attached, I'll keep it simple. Um, if you have any questions on anything on there, feel free to reach out, and um, nothing is for action at this particular meeting. Okay, and thank you. Um, and that brings us to personnel instructional. If I could have a motion to approve PI1, PI2, PI3, and PI4, please. I'll make a motion. And a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carried 6 0, and I believe we have people with us to so. introduce. Max, would you like to start? Sure. I'd like to introduce Brooke Thomas. Brooke, would you please stand up? <laughs> Ms. Thomas will be working as our new fourth grade teacher at Hewth Road, replacing Karen Shaw. Ms. Thomas is a Grand Island graduate, certified in childhood education, grades four through six, as well as students with disabilities, grades one through six. Ms. Thomas is currently working as an 811 self-contained teacher at Washington West Elementary School in Olean, New York, she has experience working as a grade one and three teacher at East U Elementary, also in New York. The interview committee was very impressed with how she was to answer questions, questions and her demo lesson. We're very happy to have her part of the Grand Island family and I look forward to working with Ms. Thomas in the future at Youth Row. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. teacher at Sidway. We are super excited to have her join the team and the family over at Sidway. Carolyn started her pursuit of an education career in high school while attending the BOCES Early Childhood Program. She's a graduate of Lewiston Porter, but we will not hold it against her. <laughs> and she is one of my former students, which is now making me feel a little bit old. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she received her bachelor's from SUNY Fredonia in early childhood and childhood certification and is in the process of getting her master's in literacy. After student teaching in the pandemic, uh, she felt the need to make sure she could get her own classroom and moved to Florida all by herself and accepted a probationary job at Cypress Ridge Elementary where she was a kindergarten teacher. Um, in talking to her principal, who called me and emailed me two times each to tell me how fantastic she was, uh, she was described as a natural leader, an asset to the kindergarten team, and one of the hardest workers she's ever worked with. Her students love her, and work hard for her. Throughout the interview process, I found Carolyn to be professional, genuine, and a lover of primary level education. We are very excited to have her join the Sidway team. Congratulations. I'd also like to introduce Molly Milville. Hi. Molly Milville is a graduate of Niagara Wheatfield High School. And since a young age, she knew that leadership and education was where she wanted to end up. She participated in the Leadership Youth Niagara County. She was also a member, or was, a, was attended the Hugh O'Brien Youth Leadership, and then returned to it as a counselor there as well, right? She received her bachelor's from Niagara University. She is certified in early childhood, child education, and teaching English to speakers of other language, or TESOL. And she is going to be joining our ENL teaching team at the district. So Molly's interview process was a little bit different as there was representatives from every building in the district on her committee. Molly is currently getting her master's in reading. Molly did start her career off in Grand Island as a building based sub at Kegabine. And then I had the pleasure of working with Molly last summer as a kindergarten teacher at summer school. And she did a fantastic job. Molly is currently a probationary kindergarten teacher in another district and is excited to make the move to ENL and to Grand Island. I would describe Molly as a go-getter. She's always upbeat, <laughs> she's motivated, and she gets things done. She did a fantastic job here in summer school, and I'm excited that she's coming back to Grand Island with their ENL population. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Ponte. Hi, everyone. 
everyone. I am really excited to introduce um, two of our new hires this evening. I'm going to start with Mrs. Laura Chitty. So Laura has accepted an elementary teaching position with us, and she is going to be our new second grade teacher at Pegabai. She started here teaching in Grand Island. Um, she's been with us the past three years. She was a teaching assistant. Last year she was a long-term sub for reading, and this year she is a long-term sub for our fourth grade classroom. She is a fantastic teacher. She truly differentiates to meet all the needs of her students in the classroom, and I am so excited to have her as part of our team, so congratulations. <laughs> and then I'm also excited to introduce you to Allison Eckstein. Allison um, was a student teacher last year at Kegabine with us, and then she taught summer school over at Sidway. She was hired this year as a long-term substitute as a teaching assistant um, in our second grade classroom, and she splits third grade as well. And she is going to be our third grade teacher this or next year. And Allison is a natural born teacher. She just has a natural gift. Um, she's amazing with the kids and the families, and I think she's going to be a perfect fit for our building. So congratulations. Thank you. Just want to scan any other intros today? Excellent. Well, welcome to everybody. Thank you for being here. That brings us to personnel non instructional. If I could have a motion to approve PNI 1 to PNI 3, please. I'll motion. And a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carried 6 0. No, I don't think so. Okay. All right. Um, and so for finance? Yep, so uh, Dr. Harris just has two items here. They're both for information only. Okay. One are the check warrants, and the second is budget transfers under 15000 Okay, thank you. And that brings us to special education. It looks like we have one action item. Two action items from yes. Andy. Excuse me, yes. Two action items, please. Okay. <laughs> can I have a motion for yes. A&B, please? I'll motion. And a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carried 6-0. Thank you. Thank you. And that brings us to the superintendent's report with Dr. Graham. All right. Hello, everybody. So, um, first of all, I want to thank our high school student ambassador, Leah, she did a marvelous job. I, maybe she you know, had to leave, but she really did a great job. And some of the items she spoke about may, you may see in, our, in the superintendent report today. Uh, of course, you know, we led with a, a, a moment of silence, and Leah shared with us uh, the wonderful student-led assembly that occurred you know, for our students uh, in honor or in remembrance of the, the individuals who were killed and murdered uh, in Buffalo at the Tops and Jefferson. So Sophia, Marissa, and Tamaya did a fantastic job. Uh, and I also want to thank not only our student leaders, but our administrators, our social worker, our school counselor, and uh, our student council president who all joined the stage uh, and you know provide provided our students an opportunity to remember, to reflect, and to consider love and respect for each other. Uh, in addition, uh, the, as some of you know, that uh, I serve as an officer on the Erie Niagara School Superintendents Association, and we put out a, a message on May 15th, and you know our message was standing, committed to promoting kindness, of course, respect for all people, and everything we do on behalf of children. Uh, 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 I just wanted to share that with you because you know the event happened on the 14th, that horrible mass shooting. The 15th, you know, we as an organization of superintendents, you know, sent out a message. Our assembly occurred on May 24th, and uh, as our students were gathered, listening to the wonderful words that were shared and helping communicate what our students and staff were feeling and experiencing at this time. Later on that morning was the mass shooting at uh, Robb Elementary in Texas. So as we were meeting, you know, to address our concerns in the Buffalo area, <clears throat> later on uh, many children were murdered in Texas. 
So, you know, this obviously has shook the nation and, of course, uh, those here and in Texas. <clears throat> so, in the span of 12 days, of course, as everybody knows, two mass shootings in the United States uh, with the murder of 31 individuals, just in Buffalo and Uvalde. Uh, our group of superintendents sent out another uh, message, this one calling for our elected leaders to pursue bipartisan solutions uh, to the challenges in the United States facing us with gun violence and mass shootings. And you heard earlier Leah talk about just some of the uh, thoughtful ways that our students are looking to support our neighbors in Buffalo through the sale of these ribbons. I think they're only $5 and all the proceeds will go to support uh, the community uh, in Buffalo. And our middle school students were also actively involved in uh, collecting food items for our friends in Buffalo. And I'd like to thank our students of the middle school as well as Mr. Bufamante who actually delivered the donations over the weekend to that Buffalo Community Center. <laughs> Uh, our rugby team, uh, with Dan Hager as their coach and leader, uh, in combination with Kenton, all got together, and during one of their events, they also did a food drive, and Don Hager and others delivered that food uh, to the city of Buffalo. So, of course, uh, given the increased gun violence, not only in Buffalo, uh, but in Texas, and of course around the United States, I thought I would take some time to share with the board just some proactive measures that we have taken as a school district over many years to improve uh, the health and welfare and safety of our students and staff. Uh, the community, uh, the board knows this, but the community may be surprised to know that we have uh, five meetings a year that are uh, at the district level and their only focus is safety. So these are the meetings that uh, were scheduled for this year. The June 9th meeting, I think now is June 14th. Uh, what's important for our community to know that it's not just administrators and teachers that are coming together to talk about district safety, but all the, uh, all the rows that are highlighted in yellow are people from the community, whether they're uh, people that help the district with insurance, um, our town supervisor here in Grand Island is uh, invited to these meetings, um, of course, uh, local police. Uh, we have, we're very blessed to have um, Homeland Security representative who lives on Grand Island, who comes to almost all of our meetings and offers great wisdom. Uh, he also uh, is a firefighter. So this uh, is a list of that safety committee. Uh, we meet regularly, as you know. And this is just a, a picture of the last agenda, which was uh, April 7th. And you can see under the word enclosures uh, down below here, uh, we even address school security and door hardening uh, as part of our um, agenda. And, and we obviously cover everything that's related to school safety. Does our board have any questions about the district safety committee? Okay, thank you. So, um, of course, in response to these two mass shootings, uh, we're very, very fortunate to have an excellent relationship, not only with our Grand Island Town Police, but the Erie County Sheriff's. As you know, if you live on Grand Island, we also have a great relationship with the Border Patrol, the New York State Police, and the New York State Parks Police. So we, when there's a crisis, it's guaranteed that we will, some, some member of one of those organizations will be here first, which is really remarkable. Um, so I think it's important you know, to thank John Whitney, to thank uh, Sheriff Garcia, who lives on Grand Island, uh, for their support and in increasing visibility and awareness from uh, the sheriffs and the Grand Island Police. So our community should be aware that you will see marked or unmarked cars. You, we have regular um, Erie County Sheriffs who are walking with principals throughout the building looking at safety. And I think Dr. Palachi, you had an experience uh, today uh, with, uh, like to, with one of the sheriffs who not only is here to give us extra protection, but offered some good advice as well. You know, the board, of course, is, as our community knows, is committed to the safety of every student and staff member. Uh, and that is done, and this is important, it's done in a combination of hardening the shell and the exterior of our schools while also softening the internal environment 
so that our children continue to experience joy, uh, value, respect, and connection throughout their school experience. These are pictures that were taken last week, and you heard Leah today talk about all of the wonderful events that are emblematic of joy and connecting uh, within the school. But we're also focused on, of course, the hardening of schools. With respect to the softening of schools and addressing mental health and mental wellness, over the last six years, uh, this district, and with the support of our Board of Education, have increased social workers from two in 2016 to four uh, starting in September. Counselors increased from six to seven, psychologists from five to six. And just kind of let that sink in for a minute. We have five school buildings, and we have six psychologists supporting our students. Uh, nurses from five to six, we have two part-time float nurses that bring us up to six nurses. Uh, we used to outsource behavioral specialist work and now we've, the board has allowed us to hire our own behavioral specialist. And the items below behavioral specialist, specialist is part of our family support services initiative, which is not only uh, supported by our board of education, but also supported by the town of Grand Island. Uh, there's a special committee that has representation from the town of Grand Island and the Board of Education and our uh, social worker Jessica Hutchings and our assistant superintendent of people services Cheryl Cardone meet regularly to talk about wellness. Uh, not only is that program up and vibrant, uh, but we have on-site third-party vendor counseling support services that are offered on a daily basis, well at least four out of five days, right? Okay, great. So that, that we should be covered five out of five days. So imagine, you know, you're a family and your child needs extra support, extra counseling. Not only do they have the support of the social worker or psychologist or counselor here in school, but that referral can be made to the out, uh, the vendor, uh, such as Gateway or um, we have uh, Horizon Human Services, for example. That is done here. It can be done during the school day or after school. We have flexible hours, and those counselors, the, the parents don't have to drive off island to get that extra support. So this is truly uh, a, a really wonderful resource that's only growing and evolving over time. Do any of our board members have questions about this? And the board, uh, many years ago, uh, have uh, added to the budget a school resource officer. So we have one full-time school resource officer that is shared between two part-time Grand Island police officers. So every day there is a school resource officer in our buildings uh, here at this campus and traveling to our other campuses. I do want to take a moment to show you the biking tip line. Sometimes uh, you'll see in a letter that I send home to the community that I reference this. So when you go to our district website, the biking tip line is right here. And I would encourage everybody that is interested just to click the link. You don't have to submit anything. But, but just take a look at where you go. You click this, this blue link, and this is where you would file an anonymous tip. And uh, when you click this, you have to choose the state. Great. And, or is that Nevada? Nevada? Ah, yeah, I thought so. Okay. So here's New York, and then you'll see uh, some schools, some local, some across the nation. But if you scroll uh, down, you'll see Grand Island. And then uh, you'll choose uh, the school where you want to make a report. So there's Sidley, of course. Uh, you can talk to us as a district, the high school, uh, youth. Uh, the middle school, and of course, um, I believe Sidbay is on here, yeah, and Kegabine. So let's say we're going to send a report to the district. Here is where you indicate the incident or issue that you're uh, concerned about. You can see there's a drop down of alcohol, drug use, bullying, fighting, harassment, safety, <coughs> risk, sexting, suicide threat, theft, weapons, vandalism, and so forth. So let's say we're concerned about somebody that has uh, suicidal ideations. The next thing you would do is indicate your connection to the incident, 
you could say uh, you could say maybe you're the victim or a friend of the victim or a friend of the suspect. You've witnessed something. You're a parent, a teacher, or other. And then you uh, just indicate. Uh, you type into this field, and then um, you can indicate how you learned about the issue. Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna you know, just type some letters here and say that I learned about this uh, because I witnessed it. And then, um, you know, you're given a few more details. Uh, you're encouraged to give a little bit more information, and then you uh, understand that it is anonymous. And when you hit submit, this will go directly to one of our principals and directly to Sheriff Cardone, no matter where, where the issue is being reported in the district. So there are two adults that will get an immediate email and it's anonymous. It comes from anonymous tips. It doesn't come from you, and it, and it can't be tracked to you. Now, we would highly recommend that you give us a call, that you send us an email, or you use this tool, and, and maybe share you know, that you would like to be contacted. You don't have to, uh, but that's always gives us a little bit more uh, leverage or uh, information to keep people safe. Uh, does our board have any questions about anonymous tips and our Viking tip line? I know that there was one that came through what, last week and you, there was a home visit and I mean I know that you follow up on every single one so I just want to stress to you know the students that are here this evening if you hear something if you see something please do report it every single one is followed up on and I know uh, before school the next day as a matter of fact in the middle of it very late at night there was a home visit because of a tip that came in you know, last week. So this is to keep you safe, to keep everyone in our school community safe. So please, please um, use it. It's a wonderful tool. And, um, you know, if you see something on social media, certainly tell us. If you hear something, um, please do um, fill out a biking tip, uh, let someone know, and uh, make sure we keep everyone safe. That's well said. And it's because we have a relationship, not only with our students, but with law enforcement that our officer in charge in Grand Island makes frequent home visits. Mike Paternostro, who is here today, has made home visits on behalf of our school, uh, and we can't thank them enough for being there for us. And also, it, it can turn into a nice coaching opportunity for a school resource officer and a member of our community to understand why we received the tip and how alarming something may be to other community members. Mike Pantanastro, did I say that pretty well? Yeah, you did. I, I know you. I know you just went on one or two recently, so thank you for your for your help with that. You know, can I just add something? Yeah, here please do. The deputies are each one of them is assigned to a school now, starting last week. Uh, the deputies will be in the parking lots during you know transition times and things like that. Each guy has a responsibility for a a building, um, so you may see them more often. Um, also, today I dropped off all the floor plans um, for all the buildings that we have. I didn't get to St. Stephen's yet, but I'll take care of that tomorrow. But each deputy will have that floor plan, too, um, available to them, either in their mobile terminal or on their, wall, or their phones. Or, but they'll be um, have all that information. Mike, I'm glad you said that because not only did you do that, but um, as a school district, most recently we made sure that the Erie County Sheriff's SWAT team has master keys to get into our building at any time that they need to. Right. And of course, Grand Island Police and some of the local sheriffs also have master keys uh, to get into our school. As a little something, last Friday they had the unsanctioned senior parade <laughs> that I monitored and uh, I saw a call come up in the terminal that said SWAT was coming to 1100 Ransom Road. And I thought, what the heck's going on? Well, that's how they're designating the individual officers who come to the schools. It's a SWAT designation, and it's uh, just for them, their own. But uh, yeah. I broke off the parade and got over here, and I said, hey. Yeah. And it was just the one guy you know, checking the building. <laughs> so. so we're very, very, very 
proud of this partnership that we have, and the Viking tip line is really a tool, you know, not, not only for any, any parent or student or staff member if need be, but any community member can share information with us. So going along in this timeline, uh, I thought it would be important to share that in the 2017-2018 school year, we met as a safety team along with the FBI, Homeland Security, the Grand Island Police, the Erie County Sheriff's Department, the New York State Police, the Border Patrol, and this Deputy Commissioner for Emergency Management, Civil Defense, and Homeland Security, we met for an entire year reviewing our protocols, but also planning an active shooter training that, that occurred here uh, on May 22nd, 2018. This was the press release that we sent out uh, that day informing uh, the community of the work that we did. Uh, along with that, uh, a few months later in September, we brought um, a guest speaker to our school system for a couple days. Don Chomet is probably one of the uh, more inspiring um, retired school resource officers who worked in Washington, D.C. in some pretty tough school environments. And he's an expert in Columbine and other mass shootings. Uh, Don Chomet came presented to our pupil personnel services, our administrators, and we talked a lot about threat assessment and uh, you know strategies to decrease and reduce any type of violence. Uh, Don Schmidt also did a parent program that, that evening on September 20th too, which uh, the parents enjoyed. I also want to make sure our Board of Education knows this, but the community may not. I have to commend uh, Jim Rosler and his Buildings and Grounds team in coordination with our technology department, Josh Nichols and Robin Quitek, for working together to build a one-button lockdown system at Sidway, at Huth, and at um, Kegabine. Uh, the next steps will be building that out here at this campus. And what that means simply is if you see, if a clerk or a principal or a teacher sees somebody coming, uh, one button, you hit the button, and the building is locked down. It's uh, connected to, uh, you know, lots of systems that communicate. Um, the principal doesn't have to get on the speaker to make an announcement during an active shooter, uh, you know, intruder, you know, who's trying to get into school, uh, because it's automated. The announcement goes out, 911 is called automatically, uh, I'm alerted automatically. We have strobe lights on the outside of the building, so if a parent was coming up to drop off a child and the strobe light's going, don't drop off that child. If one of our staff members are cutting the grass and that strobe light is going, don't go into the building, right? So it's a very, uh, we are so proud that we built this ourselves in collaboration with not only our previous <coughs> friends and tech department, and some of the vendors that work with us. And I just put up uh, the proposal that received just for Sidway to start building this out. Does uh, the board have any questions about this? This one button lockdown? The next step is the middle school high school campus. So I, I guess I would just add that I mean, at all times, all of our doors are locked, mm -hmm. right? So, Correct. Um, and we do use just one entrance in and out. Um, those of you that have visited the campus, you know you have to ring the door and tell whatever the buzzer and come on in, but I think it's important to know because I don't know that our whole our community as a whole knows that we've gone to the one and two system. I know it's a little different here at the high school. I think we have two, but they are monitored and they are locked. They still have to buzz in. It's just more than one entrance with our back parking lot. It makes it very unique. Um, it's, it's, it's well utilized. And, um, but anyway, I just, it, it, the one button lockdown is I guess in, in addition to that, but I, I know there's been a lot of questions this last week on whether our doors are locked and if we have one way in and one way out. And for our students, uh, obviously our students are, are trained during lockdown drills and so forth. They know what to do, but beyond that, our students are spoken to frequently not to let people in those other doors, right? Because that just is something we, we have to prohibit. Um, all of you should know that we have a raptor system that we use during the school day and in other times. Put your New York State license in, it scans it, checks some databases, and then uh, allows uh, entry. Uh, and if there is an issue, then our administrators get involved. Um, I can tell you that there have been a few issues where I have personally gone to uh, one of our schools a few years ago 
to address a particular situation of a person trying to get into the school. So this is a really good system, it works well, and we're grateful that we have it in all of our schools. The other thing that I'm gonna share with you is uh, the board has allowed us to upgrade cameras on a regular basis each and every year. The board has been gracious in allowing us to spend up to $35,000 extra to renew and uh, replace uh, cameras. This screenshot is just, you know, there's four windows, but if you look carefully at all of these items here, this is Youth Elementary. The principal can just drag and drop, and each one of these lines represents a camera and a view from the school. They just drag and drop into the windows that they need, and this whole uh, column is just exterior, I think. And then there's a whole other column that you can't see that are interior. So th these, are, uh, these are excellent cameras, and I can tell you that there was a, a person late at night in the winter who tried to get into Huth Road Elementary School, and it was, it was a, somebody that you know didn't have a home and was trying to break in and get warm, and this system tracked every movement in the dark uh, of this person trying to get into the school at that time. So it's very powerful and it's a great tool when we share it with uh, law enforcement because then law enforcement you know, saw exactly what was happening. There was some vandalism and, and, and so forth on the outside of the school and that person was incarcerated uh, as a result. So these tools that we're, we're enhancing and, and building over time uh, really do help our uh, school community stay safe. Any questions uh, from the board? They are, yes, and um, yeah. So no matter what time, some of them are motion activated, um, but yeah, and yes, excellent question. Well, I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say, but a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, and it, and it's, it, again. Uh, Josh Nichols can grab this data and share it immediately with the police and we have ways to share it with each other um, in different systems that we have. So of course the public and the community know that over the past few years uh, the board has worked actively to improve safety and security with our campus here at the middle school and the high school. Things have changed. Uh, it's uh, uh, now uh, just like our elementary schools People have to go into uh, you know, a vestibule, uh, be screened before they uh, enter the school. So they first they have to be screened as they're coming in, and then they're screened again before they come into the school. So uh, we're very, very pleased uh, with the way this is working out, both at the middle school and the high school. Uh, some community members uh, may be interested to know that Many of our windows uh, have a special film on them, so if an intruder shot the window, the window does not um, come apart easily, and that film keeps uh, the glass intact, and it delays the intruder from getting into the school for at least uh, a certain amount of time, which then allows people to get to safety. So this is uh, something that the board has allowed us to do. It is expensive, um, and the goal is to keep building this out over time, but every school, every entrance uh, has this protection. Any questions? So that is something we will look at, maybe trying to run all of our windows. I know we have a ton of windows, but um, I know uh, East Aurora did it, I think, over, I don't remember what the gentleman said, but it was over a long period of time, and I, I don't know where they are in the process, but I know uh, we have the safety committee, we also have our, um, facility and look at capital projects or and I don't even know what the cost is but we'll that hundred dollar. Yeah, I can give you just an estimate. Um, and forgive me if I don't have the exact number. No, that's all right. I just think if you can look at it and try and get a outlay project for hundred thousand dollars. You get uh, a refund yeah. year a uh, $100,000 capital outlay project, and we, I think it's about 78 cents on the dollar. Mm -hmm. The state reimburses us, so then we will, you know, basically it'll, it'll cost. Uh, well, let me just, I'll give you the, the, I'll give the board just a kind of general idea of the cost. And it, it, it is, um, it, it's about 15, 14, 1500 dollars a window, and we have over 1,000 windows on the first floor of our five schools. 
So it's definitely something that's a long-term plan. It's phased in over time. It might need to be in a future capital project. Also, small capital outlays may be able to help a little bit. But $1,500, generally speaking, at this time for one window. Okay. You know, it seems like you know, maybe if we needed to have a starting point, maybe it would be all of our doorways. I mean, they, all of them are. I mean, I just Our entrances are. I, well, I meant all. You know, yeah, all, um, right, right. Right, if maybe that's, it seems to be where they gravitate right. to enter the building. Right. So maybe if they were uh, done, it, it might be a starting point. I don't know. I'm yeah. just it's definitely very important and um, definitely worthy of you know, further conversation for sure. Um, so speaking of the small capital outlay project, uh, the board has allowed us to move forward with this $100,000 project. Um, we're in the process of finalizing quotes, uh, but we're pretty excited uh, to be able to begin, I think at Hughes Road, we just received a quote and it's Sidway. Uh, but these are uh, wireless access controls for every classroom door. And when you think about that one button lockdown system and other systems that we have, instead of using a hard key, which you still can do, you just use your uh, ID badge to scan into the classroom and, um, and, and uh, you know, enter. It's always locked. And then um, if for whatever reason it's not locked, you hit that one button lockdown and it locks itself. So, um, so this is going to be phased in. Uh, we just learned that uh, Assembly Member Angela Mornello has granted us uh, $25,000 toward this project. So the $100,000 from the district plus another $25,000 uh, will be very useful in building this out. And I have a meeting, I think, tomorrow with uh, Senator Sean Ryan, and he's going to look at that, and we're going to see whether or not he's able to support us in this initiative, too. Maybe at the end of our meeting, we might be able to double our efforts. So we're very excited about their, that partnership. Any questions about this? Um, so a few days ago, uh, actually last week, it might have been Wednesday, I contacted uh, John Whitney after meeting with Officer Ryan, the officer in charge of the Grand Island Police. And I asked John if he and I could get a meeting together with some of our principals, with uh, some of our Grand Island Police uh, partners, and uh, Sheriff Garcia. So we're going to be working on that in you know, the days and weeks ahead uh, to talk about uh, further safety measures and enhancing our schools uh, even uh, stronger than they are today. John Fitzpatrick took the initiative months ago to reach out to Don Shremet, uh and invite him to come back to our district. And this was prior to the mass shootings. Um, John has done a tremendous job. He's worked with Don Shemet, I think, even before Grand Island here at Grand Island, and um, John is facilitating another uh, uh, workshop with him on July 11th and 12th, where we will continue uh, to focus on violence prevention, setting goals, and threat assessments. John, anything else to add on that? Okay. It's going to be multi-schools. Yeah, it's great. Share the cost, I guess, huh? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> And, and for our community, you may have missed this or you may have caught this, uh, but actually the New York lawmakers have passed legislation that raises the legal age to pur purchase a semi-automatic rifle to the age of 21 from the age of 18. That happened just a few days ago, uh, I guess Thursday, June 2nd. So, um, you know, that's another measure at the state level uh, that, that uh, we were pleased to see. Any other questions? at this report, All right? And just uh, on a kind of an upbeat note, I want to thank uh, Teresa Lizade, Larry Austin, uh, Ruby Harris, and their team. Uh, she came up with this idea to discover the school bus and uh, have uh, people uh, this Saturday test drive a school bus uh, to encourage people to consider this as a part-time job or maybe even a career. So June 11th from 9 to noon at our transportation center, uh, if you want to test drive a school bus and you have a New York State license, just a driver's license, she will have her bus drivers and other trainers, you'll just stay in the parking lot and you can test drive that out and we'll see if we can encourage uh, some people to overcome maybe that fear of driving a big vehicle 
and uh, get some excitement going in the community to, to consider this as a, as a job opportunity. Cheryl wants to, to yeah. all right, awesome. Yeah. We've been trying to send out, it would. Yeah. We've been trying to send out messages uh, with student pictures, you know, asking for people to consider respect and love. Um, this is uh, one of our board members uh, helping us with uh, uh, academic awards at the high school. We're really grateful, Jay, that you uh, helped with that. Um, I'm sure uh, you read lots and lots and lots of names and met lots of kids. And we thank you. Too, I think. Yeah. yeah, it was awesome. So thank you for that, for sure. Um, I think you already saw this picture of our rugby team. Jim Sharp and Eric Feeblecorn are currently, have currently met with uh, elementary students at Youth and Kegabine and middle school students at, of course, the, uh, our middle school here to promote kid biz. And uh, we're real excited about the work uh, and the excitement of our kids wanting to be young entrepreneurs uh, participating in kid biz. So we look forward to that exciting program. And um, John Reed led our students our wind ensemble and Memorial Day uh, you know, celebration and recognition. And of course, we had two alum who are now admirals in the, in the New York State or in the Navy, not New York State Navy, in the Navy, and uh, they were recognized um, as well on Memorial Day. And these are just some joyful pictures of kids doing you know normal things in, in a crazy world here at our school. Um, we have tremendous students doing, you know, wonderful, wonderful things uh, and, and, you know, enjoying their love of extracurriculars and sports. This is our unified team heading off to one of the basketball games. Of course, our girls lacrosse team have done a tremendous job as well as softball. And uh, our uh, Grand Island Viking Pride does quite a bit of student spotlights on Twitter, so check them out. And uh, as you can see, I think Leah told us about this uh, concert choir award, so she did a good job there. And history was made with our girls lacrosse, uh, the first time ever, section six champions. So we're very, very proud of them as well. Mr. Grover might recognize this young lady. And Sidway's Patriotic uh, Day and uh, Class Day giving out uh, scholarships to students and other awards uh, it's just really a great uh, a, a great week and of course uh, sue is there anything you'd like to say about this okay <laughs> come and consider uh, our golf outing when you can so thank you very much that's all i have okay. thank you I think that brings us to the board of education report uh, if i could have a motion to approve a um, the Board of Education Budget Trustee vote minutes from May 17, 2022, please. In a second? second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carried 6 0. And then I don't know if you want to add anything about the GISBA fees and report that's attached. Well, I, I just want to say that GISBA is a great organization. Um, we gave away five $1,000 scholarships on last day which is always exciting to, um, to honor our kids. It's great to read the applicants for the scholarships. Where are we funded? We're funded from this wonderful golf tournament. So please show up on July 18th to golf. If you cannot golf, we do have a um, big ticket raffle that we will be putting together. I think we're hoping to get that raffle out um, in the weeks before so that we can get people that don't attend it. We, um, golf tournament itself to be able to buy tickets and support this um, great um, organization. And not only do we um, do scholarships, we do um, help some other organizations. I know we're helping um, Mr. Fitzpatrick with his emerging leaders. Is that correct? That's right. Here in June, and we have done some work with um, DACA and other school organizations. So it's wonderful to get um, uh, business owners on Grand Island excited and a part of our education and our school district. So, um, yes, and right now this is our only fundraiser. So, July 18th. Thank you. Right, we did not have anyone sign up for the public yeah. comment session. So, that brings us to um, items and information for the roundtable beginning with Jay. This is good luck to everyone as we wrap up another school year, if you can believe it. And, uh, teachers and 
parents and staff, stay patient. I know we've got a lot of excited kids to be out on summer break. So good luck down the stretch, and that's it. Just very quickly, obviously, congratulations to all our new hires um, that were presented today. I know we're going to have more for you next meeting, our principals and administrators. I want to thank you guys for running these committees because I've been in touch with them throughout each phase of their processes, and I know how hard they work to get the right people for us that fit the Grand Madeline uh, mentality philosophy. So uh, thank you guys. Thanks to teachers. Thanks to the parents out there who have participated on your committees, and also, most importantly, our students who are also involved in many of the selection processes that go on. So it's a lot of work, but you've done well this year. Again, I just want to get out congratulations to all of our uh, new hires and congratulations to our retirees. You know, we'll live your best lives and enjoy the next phase of your life. Yes, um, congratulations to our tenure recipients and to those retiring. Uh, congratulations to girls lacrosse. Wow, Section 6 champions. We are very proud of our girls lacrosse team and all. we've had such success with spring sports. It's been amazing to hear about all of the uh, championships and tournaments and things that have have happened um, with spring sports and um, I think that's it. Um, is it cross country or track that yeah. just finished up and finished a lot of our girls that were at section yep. last year. Yeah. Finished really it was fantastic. It's fantastic. So exciting to see. Um, Dr. Gray? Yeah, I'm all set. Okay, are we... Um, I think if the board would entertain a motion to go into executive session just for personnel items, it might only be about 10 minutes. And to the public, we would not be coming back to the public session. Okay, um, so then um, I will... Uh, I will um, ask for a motion to enter into executive session for the medical financial credit employment history of a particular person, corporation, matters leading to employment, employment promotion, uh, demotion, discipline, suspension, dismissal, removal of a particular person or corporation, collective negotiations, or a uh, discussion regarding proposed pending or current litigation. Can I, uh, can I have a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Okay, motion carried 6-0. With that, I'll adjourn this meeting and we will enter into executive session.